Good morning, Nabil. Welcome to the Future Proof Operations Podcast. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation. Great to have you on the podcast, Nabil. Before we start, could you give me a 60 seconds overview of who you are and what you are doing? Actually, I am the uh, general plant manager for one plant uh, from uh, Gruner uh, Group. Uh, let's say now uh, I am also the product owner of uh, EMS EAT team. Uh, and uh, in basic, I, I am an engineer in electronic fields. Uh, since 2003 and uh, practically with uh, let's say 20 years experience in uh, a different let's say uh, area uh, like quality development and sterilization even HR development also uh, and in many uh, industrial activities like injection plastic PCB uh, assembly uh, in automotive energy and so on so you already yeah. mentioned the product owner role and i know that from the software yeah. development perspective looking forward to the podcast because i know that we will talk about topics which are in between software development and manufacturing before we do that could you give me a little bit more insights about the gruner group so what's what is it about how big how many employees what are you producing mm -hmm. gruner group uh, is uh, let's say worldwide let's say uh, group company uh, mainly uh, the activities uh, concern uh, let's say uh, the design and production of relays uh, solenoids uh, and also actuators uh, mainly for uh, automotive let's say sector uh, for energy smart meet uh, smart meters and the electro electronic let's say um, uh, control uh, so uh, practically uh, more than 1600 employees uh, and mainly we have the four plants, uh, Bengen, mm -hmm. uh, India, Serbia, and the Tunisia. And uh, I am actually in Tunisia, let's say. Plant. Great. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. What is Industry 4.0 for you? Is it a relevant topic? We know that that term for 10 years already, and some companies seem to be very much in it, and other ones still work paper-based. So where are you? Yes, it's a relevant topic, of course, and as any company uh, before, let's say, uh, five years, we started working on it in uh, all the plants. Uh, and uh, let's say, uh, meantime, uh, we adapted, let's say, um, the approach to be more benefit this, uh, let's say, the work on the industry 4.0 to reach more the transformation level uh, rather than to put uh, only technology and uh, to be happy using uh, only technology, let's say. Before we dive deeper into that, take us on a tour yeah. in your factory. So if I would be visiting you, we go on the production yeah. floor. How is it looking like? How many workers are working together with you? What, what kind of automation level do you have? And so on. Mm -hmm. So now we have uh, uh, more than 350 employees and uh, we have different production assembly lines and uh, injection molding machines, press machines. Let's say is a, let's say combination between different kinds of uh, processes and we have autom full automated processes, but also semi automated uh, processes also. Uh, so the level of automation uh, and uh, let's say uh, what we name industry 4.0 practically is, is mixed some of process well let's say uh, equipped and the other still uh, in uh, semi automatic let's say uh, uh, processes using let's say uh, open so when you have been thinking with your team about digitalizing the shop floor was it more about connecting the machines for example or was it more about getting rid of paper and getting more digital uh, setup or more digital assets to your workers mm -hmm. uh, the uh, connection of the machines uh, it's done now uh, let's say uh, all uh, practically the most of the machines uh, can be led by uh, by by the group when uh, some experts need to make action 
from uh, let's say uh, Wengen, they can do it, especially the uh, end of lines uh, where let's say uh, they are fully connected to the group. And um, of course, the, the papers were, let's say, minimized uh, at maximum. Practically, uh, we use paper only for uh, certain things. But also, there is the uh, full connection uh, of uh, teams. Uh, let's say now uh, the teams are cross plans, so uh, uh, we can uh, manage that, uh, let's say, in the easiest way to get support from everywhere, uh, from every plant, from mm -hmm. every team. So in the last years, you have been at a point where you together with your team knew you want to change something and you want to digitalize, you want to transform and you want to do it in a certain way. And then you came across Scrum, Agility, so Agile mm -hmm. project frameworks. And I know that from software development perspective. And when we talked in the last preparation call, I found that super interesting that this is applicable for manufacturing as well. So before we start, what is Scrum and Agile project management for you? Mm -hmm. Let's say we can start by uh, Agile, let's say, uh, thinking. So uh, let's say uh, if, if we talk about the last three years, let's say uh, what, what uh, was happening in the world. <laughs> so if we talk about COVID, uh, restrictions, uh, if we talk even about many other things. So uh, here, uh, let's say this volatile or let's say cast market changing uh, and uh, uh, we don't know every uh, even every month what, what is changing in the world. So we need a certain agility from the organization. So like that, the organization can, let's say, be flexible and can every time adapt, uh, let's say, uh, the product that uh, we deliver to the needs of the market and customers. And if you talk about Scrum, so what is the way to be agile in an organized way? Uh, because, uh, let's say, agility needs more involvement from all the layers of workers, so it's more open, more so uh, everyone uh, will be, let's say, connected to 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 uh, to uh, make uh, his, let's say, uh, intervention and uh, let's say initiative. So this scrum can be the methodology can uh, can uh, let's say um, manage all of that, all of that. Because if we, if we will use standard system, can cannot be a container for agility. The agility is. Uh, bigger is higher than any uh, standard system so this scrum can be the good way to uh, answer the the, the or perfect organization uh, for uh, agile let's say um, teams and organization and how did you come across this frameworks because i found it very very unusual that you talk about that and yeah. of course it makes sense um, overall but how did you come to Scrum? How did you come to Agile Project Framework? Mm -hmm. Honestly, from my side, let's say it, it's, uh, it, it was, let's say, uh, orientation, strategic, let's say, orientation from group level. And uh, let's say, um, let's say in the group from CEO and the team, uh, they, um, let's say, um, learned a lot about this agility and comes to us, let's say, uh, is something uh, we see that helping us a lot. So uh, let's say uh, it was the perfect need, especially with starting of COVID, uh, let's say, situation. It becomes uh, not option. It, it was, let's say, strategic orientation maybe for 15 years, but with the starting of COVID, it was, uh, uh, let's say, the um, perfect solution uh, at that moment. What have been the reasons for Gruner and for your team to go in this direction? So have there some, have there been some particular pain points beforehand where you knew, okay, we definitely have to change something or what was the trigger moment? Let's say, uh, I remember that, uh, it was the main, let's say, um, uh, what the need from whole, let's say, customers and the group, it was the flexibility. 
and how uh, to be uh, connected all and how all the levels can be uh, motivated and evolved so uh, let's say uh, uh, the solution of this scrum agile uh, uh, is uh, let's say uh, perfect to to uh, to reach this uh, to satisfy this need let's say expressed by uh, by whole uh, let's say all, uh, the uh, group nabil when you talk about motivation which kind of impact does Scrum and agility have on the motivation of your employees? And why do you think, think it's like that? Mm -hmm. The mechanism or let's say the process uh, or the approach itself of the uh, Scrum Agile, when uh, uh, we have well looped, let's say, uh, so now we'll talk about the, the language of Scrum, so the sprints. Let's say so. Uh, let's say we have uh, periodic sprints. For us, we fixed uh, one week for for standard teams, and for more let's say uh, uh, in development of product, uh, they are three weeks. Uh, let's say uh, as a sprint. Let's say uh, uh, period. Then let's say the solution itself allow the team working in uh, a daily basis, in our daily with openness. Uh, and the chaining the values, the values of Scrum Agile, there are, uh, let's say, in, they increase motivation of employees, especially the transparency, uh, let's say, the courage, and uh, additional, let's say, values, uh, even development uh, from us, let's say, uh, with the uh, teamwork. Um, when you mentioned sprints, help me to understand how the daily work, the routines are changing for your team. Let's assume I'm a team member and you are my boss and I've been part of that transformation. So how is the day now looking like? What about the routines? How do we communicate? How do we work? Uh, as a starting, we have to clarify that there is no bus in uh, okay. Scrum Agile. So <laughs> your role change. It. <laughs> yeah. My role uh, changing. Let's say really the um, the nomination as a general plant manager uh, is uh, for practically uh, mainly for external yeah. let's say needs when we need a certain official let's say representative for some things, especially for authorities and so on. But really in our life in the company, no more uh, let's say as a plant manager, but uh, I as a uh, executive meta scrum and executive action team working with other teams so if you are a member of one team if we talk um, at majority we have the agile production teams for example in production so if you are a member in the in, in your team so there is no direct connection the team where you are working with you are autonomous fully autonomous and the frame from, from the beginning in uh, establishing a vision for the team and values to work together and uh, with uh, let's say uh, 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 let's say the daily retrospective and the demo later on which is a connection between us so uh, uh, let you uh, working to reach uh, let's mm -hmm. say the vision and from our side as EMS AAT so we work on the performance of the organization also we have our daily our retro and even our demo and then you will be stakeholders so in, in your demo we are part of stakeholders of course there are other stakeholders like customer and so on and other teams but in our demo you are a part of stakeholders so you can think about how to let's say i have you i have to validate our product as an organization with you also so you are a part of stakeholders where you can, uh, let's say, comment and uh, make a critics on our products, which is the organization. And you can uh, also uh, tell that, OK, uh, maybe this cannot fit with uh, something. So we have to take into consideration and uh, we make our planning for the next spring mm -hmm. according to that. Wasn't it a very big transformation for the whole team when you say, we talked about boss in the past, but now we talk about teams. 
we are talking about vision, about values. We will have a retrospective. So I assume it has been a very big change for everybody and a big mindset change as well. Exactly. It's big transformation, let's say. Uh, let's say other culture, other, uh, let's say, uh, how to do uh, the respect, uh, which now in the team is so high. Uh, let's say all is inner, let's say, inner motivation, inner implication, all uh, happen in inner uh, from us, let's say. No one pushing you to make something. I would like to go a little bit deeper and understand certain areas yeah. within that new framework. You talked about vision. Okay. How did you set up the vision? Yeah. So what was the vision beforehand? Probably for everybody just doing my job, right? And then you talk with your colleagues about setting up a vision. How was that, how was that process? How did you find that vision? The vision, let's say, uh, is defined, uh, let's say, uh, uh, its importance. But let's say in standard way, there is one uh, at the head fixing the vision and he's trying to influence people. This is the vision and how to involve them on that vision. So the vision is existing before the Azure Scrum. But now we will talk about common vision. So it was a longer process, uh, really. And uh, really, before the vision, we established the values. So it's inverse, yeah. let's say, a little bit. <laughs> because the vision now is uh, a common work. It's not my vision. It's yeah. a team vision. So let's say, after establishing the value, so we can collaborate together. Then we have uh, mainly nine values, but reduce it in five values to be more effective in the understanding. So, and we made a certain exercise applying the values. This is, takes practically the values itself two months, three months, until the values are clear for whole the team. Then we, we started establishing the vision. So it started by everyone uh, make like uh, dreaming, let's say like uh, uh, not sleeping, but uh, mm -hmm. imagination <laughs> process. So we takes everyone practically f f uh, 10 or 15 minutes imagine what uh, he see our company in the next 10 or mm -hmm. 15 years then we share it each one uh, it's let's say imagination or the the let's say the picture of our future and then we started negotiating negotiating so until let's say many let's say workshops until we 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 come with uh, the intersection of all of that. So uh, then uh, we have at the end one vision, but this is, is a common vision. It's not mine. Can you give us an example for a value, for example, or two values? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we have taken uh, the transparency, which is already existing in the Scrum Agile, let's say. Uh, the respect, the responsibility, and uh, also the innovation, because also uh, we wanted to uh, to be a leader on implementing uh, the group also vision, which is uh, contain the innovation also, so and commitment. These are the main uh, five, let's say, values uh, designed together. You have that vision, you have the values, and now you want to bring it to life. And I heard already yeah. from you that there is a daily that there is a retrospective. Help us to understand how this formats, that meeting formats, bring the values and the vision to life. So uh, let's say after a certain uh, period, before these, uh, let's say, uh, Scrum loops, it was uh, many uh, workshops with assistance of, uh, uh, we have one coach in, in our group helping us. And later on, as you mentioned, so we have practically in every team, the team members or the developers in the language of Scrum, we have the product owners and also the Scrum master. So the Scrum master, uh, let's say, is a big responsibility to, to answer that uh, the how done according to the Scrum approach and also the values are uh, uh, online. So everything uh, we do on a daily basis and through 
uh, is practically uh, on a daily basis uh, check it uh, with uh, in comparison with the values uh, and uh, for everything let's say not respecting our values so is addressed in our retro openly within the team only with the support of scrum master and this scrum master makes that uh, the team members are so open to 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 chair what's happening and uh, there was uh, a person development let's say sessions on that way to ensure the implementation of the values is it working out like expected so do you have openness transparency within the retrospectives i know that from software development as well that it's a process to get the team into the mode of really sharing what is good and what is bad mm -hmm especially if you didn't do it before for the last 10 or 15 years. You have right at the beginning, let's say, uh, in, I remember the first retros. So I, were, I was present, uh, let's say, in certain retros also with our CEO. But later on, to answer the openness, so uh, it, uh, we decided that the retro is only the team mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So then uh, they are more open to each other with the help, with the certain support from personal development, let's say, uh, let's say uh, team, then uh, like that by exercises, this was not, it was not easier from the beginning, but following many exercises, let's say, then the team uh, starting uh, be open. And one thing which is important is the courage. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, from our side, we um, we tried every time by working in our team as EMS80, showing uh, uh, that we are example of openness yeah. and so on. So we accept every comment, every idea, every critics, and we hand, handle it correctly that everyone uh, feel, let's say, uh, So open. did you... Yeah. Did you change your behavior as well because you need to be a role model for your team? And was it a bigger change for you? Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, I remember, let's say, before, uh, let's say, like any standard, let's say, management. So uh, uh, orientation, we have to do uh, performance, let's say, and we do, uh, let's say, assessment uh, for everyone contributing. Uh, we have strategy, uh, so I am the uh, the person whom uh, let's say define the strategy. So all things happening uh, by uh, let's say through my let's say uh, orientation and validation and so on. A uh, little bit mm -hmm. hard <laughs> uh, in my talks. One direction. <laughs> so you need to develop yourself further as well. Yeah. Exactly. Starting from as let's say yeah, you have right. Yeah. If I would like to transform my way of working in my shop floor and my factory as well, and I would use your role model, how should I set up the project? So how did the project start from your perspective? Which kind of stakeholder did you involve? How long did it take you? Is it already finished? Mm -hmm. uh cannot be finished because it's a continuous, let's say, <laughs> improvement. Uh, but let's say from the beginning, it, it was one year about, uh, let's say, theoretical, let's say, uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, many sessions for theoric, let's say, training on the Scrum Agile, Agonetic Scrum Guide. And then we started by uh, uh, pilot or examples of teams and uh, which are let's say uh, which was concerning let's say uh, some um, optional teams let's say uh, not optional but the development teams let's say yeah in the organization for example uh, the tpm team uh, let's say total productive yeah. maintenance team uh, the lean six sigma team the develop uh, training development team and then by practice uh, within one year now it, the approach is more clear and uh, starting from the third year <laughs> we started the hard mm -hmm. transformation by uh, uh, let's say um, transforming the production teams mm -hmm. also it was a little bit hard because many changes in the organization so 
uh, even though there was this changes in the leader, the leadership team because we, we was talking about uh, managers now about product owners and scrum masters so complete change then we start the real change inside production yeah. and we fixed uh, we was fixing target about to reach 80 percent of the organization uh, with working with agile teams uh, practically now uh, within four years i think the level now it's so good it's not our assessment but uh, from uh, many comes to us uh, working on the same topic uh, in uh, let's say for other companies our level now it's it's uh, i think yeah. it's good and four years it's a plenty of time so you didn't do it from yesterday to today it's not done in days okay. or weeks yeah cannot be done in days yeah. or weeks <laughs> it will, will not be a real uh, transformation let's say if you now look on the current state you, you said you will never be done so it's a continuous improvement process but if you take the current state and compare it to five years ago what is the biggest benefit that you see coming out of that transformation and what is the biggest benefit for gruner as a company mm -hmm. uh, let's say the for us here uh, let's say the motivation level now for all our employees even for me it's so high uh, the let's say um, the contribution the value of contribution it's also so high and the organization is well robust uh, practically with any needs the organization in autonomous way all the teams adapt the approach mm -hmm. to this uh, let's say um, loops existing already in this scrum agile uh, let's say approach and for the whole the group now uh, for the group uh, we, we was a leader on this transformation so uh, we uh, we reached the level that we present we make uh, we made our demo uh, for mm -hmm. whole the group and uh, we was a leader on that we were so happy and also the level of satisfaction when we, we uh, the group make for us uh, let's say the uh, yearly satisfaction let's say uh, uh it, we we made a concrete let's say progress on that and also for our customers uh now practically uh let's say in terms even the customer let's say uh, assessment customer complaints also was reduced uh, let's say in a huge let's say uh, <laughs> let's say uh, level so let's say the uh, satisfaction now it's for whole internally here for us and also for the group and our customers also. satisfaction motivation did you see changes in production kpis as well i could assume the failure rates for example could decrease before uh, because you have more ownership of the result of your work do you see something like that yes uh, practically the external let's say kpis which are connected to our customers are uh, let's say uh, perfectly let's say improved especially uh, let's say uh, uh, the um, the number of uh, let's say complaints and external yeah. ppms let's say here i have to mention it was a little bit let's say um, the, uh, many discussions about kpis because let's say the use of kpis in agility needs certain mm -hmm. adaptation it was not easy because the standard kpis maybe cannot handle uh, the transformation and the agility because really uh, what we want to measure uh, is uh, let's say uh, the, uh, maybe the let's say the, the connection to the vision of the team and here the KPIs standard KPIs cannot handle that cannot uh, uh, help uh, on that and this uh, needs uh, certain let's say uh, clarifications uh, for whom want to use KPIs with the uh, Agile teams. Nabil, in the last five or four years, you went through a transformation project. You took a lot of decisions. You learned a lot. What have been your biggest learning on that journey? What would you do probably different today? 
So uh, practically, the main uh, learning is uh, how, uh, let's say, uh, our way of leadership uh, is, uh, let's say, making progress to reach a certain what we name a servant leader. So is uh, leadership by influence, by by mentoring, or okay, sometimes by coaching also, but uh, also uh, how to focus on the uh, organization development and people development. Uh, yeah, this is the, let's say the main learning that I, that I where I developed myself. Yeah. I find that very interesting as a as a summary of the whole thing. The transformation starts with yourself, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are coming to an end already, Nabil. It's super interesting to talk with you, and at the end, I would like to understand. Mm -hmm. What is your vision for your factory 10 years from now? So what do you want to achieve and how is the final picture looking like for you in 10 years? Yeah. So here, uh, as you mentioned uh, before about uh, the industry 4.0. So now after uh, this big, let's say, uh, transformation that uh, we made here, Uh, I can uh, see a full, let's say, um, smart, let's say, uh, a smart clean factory, uh, but in concrete way, in deep way, in deep, uh, let's say, uh, using of, uh, in a right way, uh, the technology, uh, uh, whatever, let's say, uh, in automation or smartness or, let's say, uh, allows the technology. And uh, also, let's say we want to work, uh, let's say again, on to be a leader on that in the group level and uh, to reach uh, in, uh, let's say, to innovate uh, even our product, to help the group to innovate our products uh, for many, let's say, um, other innovative activities, let's say. Nabil. And to be a leader in, in the world, let's say, on, on mm -hmm. this material. Nabil, thanks for being on the podcast. It was a pleasure to talk with you. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.